What's up guys, it's Joanna here, founder and CEO of Subwell. And recently we've seen a ton of exciting shoe releases hit the market. So I wanted to take a look at running shoe prices and specifically do an analysis of what some of the most expensive running shoes are out there today. For the purposes of this analysis, I looked only at true performance running shoes, you know, no Yeezys, no Jordans, no Louboutins that have a rubber outsole on them. Just tried and true running shoes, but with a high price tag. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I approached this list by looking across all different categories. So we're gonna have daily trainers, up-tempo shoes, trail shoes, and racers. I didn't want it to be just all racers because if we looked at the most expensive shoes, it would be just a bunch of $250 carbon fiber shoes and a few that cost 300. So we're looking at it across different categories to get you this list. First up, we're gonna take a look at the daily trainer category. And the most expensive daily trainer we have on the market today is the Tracksmith Elliott Runner coming in at $198. So what justifies this price tag? The Tracksmith Elliott Runner is gonna have that dual foam midsole. The sock liner is made with the super critical P-Bax, which is a bit softer and bouncier, while the regular midsole is made with a full length bed of standard Piva. It also comes from Tracksmith, which is a Boston-based boutique running brand, and they tend to charge a premium on all of their products from their Henleys for winter running to their shorts, their half tights, and their socks. They just got some brand cachet so they can charge the dough. All right, next up, we got the Max Cushion Trainer. And in this category, the most expensive Max Cushion Trainer on the market today, and that's without a plate, is the ASIC Super Blast, also coming in at $200. What justifies that price tag? It's because ASICs is combining their Super Foam, which is FF Turbo, with their Standard Foam. They have a thick stack of FF Turbo underfoot for a total stack height of 45.5 millimeters, which is one of the tallest stack heights in the game we do have another shoe on this list that's going to trump that but hold on to your knickerbockers for one second next up we have the most expensive tempo shoe and that is going to be the nike tempo next percent so this thing hit the market it was meant to be a companion to nike's alpha fly and it actually replaced the pegasus turbo which runners loved it never quite reached that level of desirability and acceptance in the market but it's sitting at 200 dollars today and i have a good friend who uses this for most of our track workouts together and he likes it but i'm not quite sure if that $200 price point is justified for this shoe. It does have a carbon composite plate in there and it uses Nike Zoom X foam, but it just doesn't have the same pop and zing as that Alpha Fly. And it's a bit of a watered down shoe when you're looking at the whole landscape. We have some other shoes coming in at 160 that are using a similar formula these days, like the A6 Magic Speed 3, the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. So Nike coming in at $200 here is a bit unjustified and we'll see if they make a second version of this where they price it in the market because that super trainer segment is getting really competitive. All right guys, before we get into the carbon plated race shoes, let's take a detour onto the trails. And the most expensive trail shoe we have on our list is the Speedland GS Tam. That's coming in at $310. So the Speedland GS Tam is gonna be a carbon plated trail racer with a massive stack of this Piva foam. And that's what's driving up the price to that $300 price point. So they're using a super foam and they're a boutique running brand. So you can actually grab this for $275 if you don't choose to use the carbon plate. Then the carbon plate is an additional $35, but if you get the complete package, it's gonna be $310. I've heard really good things about this shoe. It's gonna compete with those shoes like the Saucony Endorphin Edge and some of those other plated racers like we have the Vective Pro from North Face, but I think this is gonna be one that really takes hold in the trail running community over the next year or two. All right, next up, we got the most expensive non-plated trail shoe. We have the Norda 002 coming in at $295. Let's just round it up, call it $300. 
This is the latest from Norda, which is a Canadian dedicated performance running brand that is focused on making the best shoes for the trails. So the Norda 002 is their second iteration or second model. They're not calling it an iteration on the 001, which we also have on this list, but they're calling it an additional model in their lineup. It's got a bit of a lower stack than the 001, and they're bumping up the price by $10 to place it in the top tier position in their lineup. So I personally have the Norda 001 and I like it. And I think the Norda 002 is also gonna do a great job out there. It's gonna be a bit more nimble and responsive on the trails than the 001. All right, so next up, without further ado, we got that Norda 001 that I was just talking about. It's my favorite trail shoe that I've ever run in. It's super grippy, it's super tactile, it has a really nice looking upper and overall design. Matter of fact, let me just pull this thing out for you. All right, the Norda 001. This is a beautifully constructed shoe. I have the Ray Zahav edition right here, but this has a Dyneema upper. That's one of the factors that's driving up the price in the Norda 001 and the 002. This is a material that they say is stronger than steel. It's not gonna rip, it's not gonna get abrasion or scratches from rocks. And that same Dyneema material is in the laces as well. And we have a Vibram midsole here. It's one of the only shoes that uses Vibram's midsole. And then the outsole is also Vibram. And you can see mine's got a good amount of usage on it right here. I'm not messing around when I go out there on the trails. I actually did 50 mile trail racing weekend in these things. All right guys, back to the roads. Now let's get into what everyone has been waiting for, the carbon plated racers. So first up, the most expensive carbon plater razor that we have on the market today is the On Cloud Boom Echo 3, which was just released. Now this is sitting at $290, and I am not sure that that $40 price premium over something like the Nike Vaporfly or the A6 Metaspeed Sky is gonna be worth it, simply because what is on done to this day to justify that performance premium? Now, they typically price their other shoes like the On Cloud Monster or the On Cloud Surfer with a 10 to $20 price premium over the competition. For example, the Cloud Monster is sitting at $170, whereas typical daily trainers like the Nike Pegasus is at 140, and the Saucony Ride is at 140, something like the Hoka Mach 5 is 140. So On is used to applying that price premium, but the buyers of daily trainers trainers and the buyers of race day shoes are completely different. The buyers of daily trainers are more mainstream, they're more influenced by trends and fashion. The buyers of performance running shoes are going to be influenced by what works. So I think Ons got a little bit ahead of their skis on this one. We'll see how it sells. It's got a full PVAX midsole. It's got a bit of a lower profile than something like the Vaporfly. And so far I've heard that the ride is pretty snappy and responsive and it is a legit super shoe, but is it worth $290? Probably not. All right, next up we've got two carbon fiber shoes which are tied at $275. The first one is Nike's Alpha Fly Next Percent. And so the Alpha Fly is that famed shoe that Elliot Kipchoge wore when he set that sub two marathon record. And here we have the second iteration. It's got that Zoom Air unit up in the forefoot. It's got a carbon fiber plate and it's got that Zoom X P-Bax midsole. So is this worth the $270? Absolutely. I know the first version was a bit more admired and cherished, but the second version still retains that same performance qualities. And you know, Kipchoge is still racing in that thing. So if it's good enough for Kipchoge, keep your complaints to yourself, it's good enough for you. Second shoe that we have sitting at $275 tied with the Alpha Fly is Saucony's Endorphin Elite. So this thing hit the market earlier this year. Saucony already had their Endorphin Pro 3 as their main marathon race day shoe. That's $250. So they put the Elite as the king of the lineup. And the main difference we're gonna see between the Pro and the Elite is that the Elite is using Saucony's Power Run HG foam. And so this has gone through a super critical process, which means it's been injected with gas, which typically makes those types of foams a bit bouncier, a bit denser, and a bit more responsive than their non-supercritical 
complements, which in this case would be the Power on PB that's in the Endorphin Pro. The Elite also has a slotted carbon fiber plate, which should help with bit with cornering and flexibility up in the forefoot, and it has a super aggressive rocker. So I've heard great things about the Elite so far. I've heard that the price is worth it because you are getting a faster feel than you see in the Pro, but I'm a bit worried that they put it at 275 because what does that mean in the market? What it's telling me is that any other company who's coming out with an innovation in the super shoe game is gonna have to price it at $275. And if Nike is coming out with the next version of the Alpha Fly, the three next year, they're 100% gonna put it above $275 to convey to us runners, I'm better than the Elite because I'm more expensive. So Saucony, you've gotta start it on a slippery slope. It's not just inflation, it's gonna be an all out price war to see who is the most premium race day super shoe. I'm not excited for that, but $300 super shoes are gonna be the norm starting in 2024, mark my words. Next up, we got one of the most expensive running shoes on the market today. I call this the most expensive max cushion recovery running shoe, and that is going to be the Adidas Prime X Straw. So this thing has a massive stack, 50 millimeters of that Adidas Light Strike Pro Foam, which is also a super critical compound and is very bouncy, very responsive. The ride on this thing is a bit unstable, but it really does the work of running for you. This thing makes it so easy to glide along and makes it effortless to hold those easy paces. It's also super versatile when you want to pick up the pace, it can adapt and do that as well. And it doesn't feel as heavy and clunky as other Max Cushion shoes because it has some plates and rods reinforcing that ride and giving it some pop. The question on this one now is, is it worth $300? The answer is maybe, but it's justified because of that huge amount of super foam cushioning we see in there. So in something like the ASIC Super Blast, which is priced at 200, it's using a dual layer of foam. It's not entirely all that super foam. They have some of that standard EVA in there as well. Also in the Super Blast, there's no plate. So by going full super foam and adding those plates in, I do think $300 is worth it. Plus there's some proprietary technology going on in the upper with the way that they've done the strong component. All right guys, save the best for last. I got the most expensive shoe overall, and that is a fashion sneaker that you can actually run in. It is the Athletic Propulsion Lab running shoe. APL got famous a few years ago because they put basically mini trampolines in basketball shoes. They got banned by the NBA because they help people jump too high. Now they came out a few years later with the Tech Loom zip line, and this is a performance daily trainer, a performance running shoe from this fashion brand that it's gotten some good reviews, but that midsole is still EVA based. Now, I don't care. Now, I don't care what you want to call it. You can call it future foam, you can call it fiddly foam, you can call it fun foam, but if you're putting an EVA based foam in a midsole, it's not worth $300 unless you're a fashion brand like APL. That's how they can move this thing. I wouldn't put this in the serious daily trainer category, but you can run it. It does have a legitimate midsole foam, even if it is EVA based. And it is coming in at $320 as the most expensive running shoe on the market today. All right guys, there's our list of the most expensive running shoes on the market today. Let me know in the comments if there's any others you think I should have included. I did my research pretty well and I decided to leave out all those $250 super shoes for the sake of not crowding this list. But if there are other 300 plus shoes that I should know about, drop me a note below. Let me know any other future videos like this you might want to see me make and have a lovely day. I will make sure to keep you up to date on all the latest in performance running. If you like, follow, and subscribe to the channel.